Good so, sorry. Uh, Frank was just talking about the, the defense, and uh, so far this season, uh, even though it's number one overall in efficiency, teams are scoring at the rim a little bit better. Is there anything that you've noticed uh, in the last four or five games that stood out when you guys have film foods about that back line defense? Um, low man. Um, I think that's just the biggest thing. Um, you know, a low man just hasn't been as great as it's been all season. Um, so, I mean, just a little, little, um, you know, shortage of it, but, um, you know, something that we got to get back to. So. Hey, how do you think about this specific matchup with the Bucks? Who's that you individually look forward to or uh, as, a, as a team concept? Uh, not individually. I'm just trying to win the game. Uh, just, that's the goal, just try to win as many games as possible. Um, you know, that's just kind of where my, my mentality is at, the team's mentality is at. And we know we have a tough matchup with a, a contender, and we're ready to fight. Bill Laura. Hey Kyle, what do you remember about the game when you guys went to Milwaukee last year and they kind of um, uh, kind of took it to you a little bit? And then what did it mean to get the win right before the shutdown? What did, what did that victory against them mean to lead to your team? Um, man, that was a tough trip. I didn't play that trip. I was hurt. Um, that's one thing I, I remember. Uh, two, I remember um, uh, Giannis hitting a bunch of threes. Um, us being down by 20 in the first half, coming back. Um, you know, that's kind of what I really remember from that trip. And Wendy? Hey, Kyle. Um, it's been about a year uh, since Kobe's passing. Um, I'm curious, how long ago does it feel? Um, does it feel like it's been a year? Does it feel like it's been longer? Time is kind of nuts. And then secondly, um, what was it like kind of having to experience such trauma in real time in front of everybody um, so publicly? Uh, it was very tough, especially for the people that um, were close to him. Obviously, family, Vanessa, um, you know, children. Um, you know, mother, father, you know, probably really tough for those guys in, in, in the public. And obviously for us that actually knew them, uh, you know, closer than others, um, it was tough. Um, you know, just something that's always in your head. He's always in my head. So, um, yeah, you know, just a, a, a very tough situation that we went through last year. And, um, you know, for those that were um, close to him, you know, it continues to be tough. So. Is it easier to talk about? Yeah. Um, sometimes, you know, just the matter uh, matters on the manner of a, of the of the topic of the situation. Um, so yeah. Damon Benjamin. Kyle, you guys all grieve in your own way. Um, I want to ask you if you recall any feeling or emotion when you saw that um, Anthony and LeBron both got those. Kobe tribute tattoos last season when, when we saw them for the first time? Um, I mean, I, I didn't really have no emotion or um, feelings about that. I mean, that's that's their personal decision to get tattoos. Um, so, yeah. yeah. All right, we'll make these the last two. Let's go to Kyle Booth. Hey, Kyle. Um, Sort of on that track, I was wondering, um, you know, before you were in the league, was there um, something um, very specific in, in Kobe's game that you tried to imitate or try to incorporate in your game? I mean, the, the turnaround fadeaway is sort of one of his iconic moves. Was there something like that? And, and when you got to meet him, work with him, what was it like sort of get, entering that space and, and, and sort of being a student of his? Um, yeah, you know, it's um, obviously it's tough to, you know, replicate anything he's ever tried to done. Um, obviously, uh, as a young player, as a, a kid in college, as a kid in high school, as a kid in elementary, you always try to really uh, emulate your idols, whether, like you said, that's a fadeaway jump shot. Um, you know, I think one thing comes to mind is uh, footwork with him. Um, you know, I think more so since I've been in the NBA, um, it's 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 kind of been like the mentality, um, you know, which is a hard thing to do, and um, you know, consistently do. Um, when you think about that, you know, quote unquote Mamba mentality, 
you know, it's it's something that's a lifestyle. It's something that's an everyday, every possession type of thing that, you know, we try to, you know, for me, I try to strive to do, um, you know, just trying to play with a, um, a relentless pursuit, um, every possession. Um, you know, I think that's just one thing that, you know, Obviously, you know, he's a, he was a great shot maker. He was this, he was that, a uh, great competitor. But one thing you could pencil him in was, pencil in for him was uh, competing on every possession and uh, having that relentless pursuit, uh, pursuit. So I think that's one thing um, that you kind of, as a young player or um, a player in the NBA, college, whatever, you that's what you admire. All right, and last one here, let's go to Card Jones. Of the time. Hey, hey. Uh, just, just real quick, uh, Frank Vogel always talks about how you got the opportunity to speak on um, film sessions. You know, what has that done? What is it, how has it helped you and the team? And also, is this the first time you're really have uh, the opportunity to do that? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question you just asked. I think that um, in my first two years in the league, um, you know, really we were kind of young teams and film rooms are much different. Uh, much, much different. Um, for young young teams, it's it's always the coaches that talk, though it's always the coaches that tell you what's wrong, uh, what you need to be doing better. And then, um, you know, really last year around the bubble, um, you kind of really, you pick up that intensity as a, um, as a team, um, you know, with the coaches as well, but more so the players on the court. And you really, you really kind of take over, to really take over the film room and you, you, you know you kind of own that as a um, as a as a team, and I think that it helps so much, um, you know, just for the camaraderie, but also just the chemistry of the team. Because, you know, you, when you think about it, let's say on a young team, it's the coach that is always talking, coming in every morning. Uh, you may not pay attention to the film as much. Uh, you may, you know, have questions, but you don't want to ask out to look dumb. And uh, fast forward to the opportunity that, you know, I, I've seen as a young player, um, you know, everybody has uh, something to say. Um, everybody has something to do better. Um, and, and it really allows you to, you know, realize that everyone makes mistakes and everybody can, you know, hold themselves accountable for those mistakes. And I think that, um, you know, having players talk in the film room is essential to win championships and essential just for growth um, on the court. Because at the end of the day, um, coaches do and should have uh, their own words in the, in the film room. But at the end of the day, uh, they're not on the court. It's the players on the court. And um, that starts in the film room.